Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. I've postponed the next uh, video on the study that we're doing in Romans, verse by verse, just to put this video out here to answer some questions concerning a very important subject that people have been writing me about that has to do with your old rotten self. The sin nature, the flesh, the old man, you know, all of that ugly stuff that it kind of puts you out of joint in your walk with Christ. Kind of, it's kind of puts you out of shape, sort of like my hat here, you know, after all this rain that we've been having here in southeastern Oklahoma. Now, folks, I don't hardly know where to begin talking about this subject. You know, we're talking about the sin in your life. All of that ugliness, all of that stuff that you hate and you despise, oh, wretched man I am. I guess the best place to start is just to remind you of the fact that you are both dead and alive. That's probably the best place to start. I don't know, I've never really truly uh, researched it, but there are a number of, of, of mentions in Scripture of the fact that you the believer in Christ have died to sin, but you're alive in Christ. Now just that one fact alone confirms the reality that you are a dual natured individual. You need to understand that before you came to Christ, you were a single natured individual. You, did, you weren't made a new creation in Christ. You didn't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. You weren't baptized into the body of Christ. You weren't regenerated. You weren't made new. And Christ had to come into your life and take up a abode. He had to live in your life. But he couldn't, be, he couldn't be touched by that sin, that old man, that wretched old nature. He couldn't be touched by it. He had to remain separate from it. That is exactly why you became a new creation in Christ Jesus. You were given a new nature in which Christ dwells. A sinless new nature according to the Apostle John. We read about that in, in his, his later epistles. So you are a new creation in Christ, but you have died. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. You have died to sin, self, the law, the world, Satan, and even death itself. You have died to death. I've pointed this out in, in past videos. You, death means separation. You are separated from sin, separated from self, separated from the world. And I believe that to be the world system. You were separated from Satan. He no longer has any hold on you. In fact, the evil one does not even touch us, according to John. You also died to and were separated from law. We're not under law, but we're under grace. And you have died. You've been separated from death itself, death meaning separation. So, as I've said before, you were separated from being from that which separates you. The text couldn't be more clear. And most Christians today, most, bemoan their sin nature. They're worried about it. They're concerned about it. They struggle to try to overcome it. When the first imperative, the very first imperative, this is, I'm, I'm speaking dramatically here, in the grammar, the first imperative, in the in, command in the imperative mood, we find in Romans 6, 11, which says, to reckon yourselves dead to sin, but alive unto God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The sin issue, folks, has been settled. Most Christians still wallow in all that garbage, trying to overcome it through the flesh, trying to overcome it through whatever means that they deem necessary or, or they feel that's possible, and in the flesh dwells no good thing. You'll never have peace, rest, and joy trying to do that. So I want to talk first about something that many people refer to as the three pillars of knowledge. 
three pillars of knowledge. The first is our, our birth, our new birth, our acceptance in Christ. We've been accepted in the beloved. And our security, our standing in Christ, secure, forever secure. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. Now, there were a lot of things that happened when we were born again, born from above by the will of God, not the will of the flesh. A great number of things occurred at the moment that we were regenerated, made anew, given new life. And this video is, it's not the intent of this video to go through all of those things. That's quite a lengthy study in and of itself. Just, just to name a few, you were made righteous, as righteous as Christ, made the very righteousness of God in Christ. You were given access to God, reconciled to God. But to make it a long story short, you stand secure with Christ. God has nothing against you. And that is the first pillar of knowledge. Most Christians came to understand, at least I hope they did, came to understand that at the beginning of their walk in Christ. When, they, when conversion took place at whatever time that was in your life, and you came to know Christ as your life, as your substitute, that He died in your place, therefore you cannot die. That's the first pillar. And then there's the second pillar. The second pillar is after we've come to understand our substitutionary death, that Christ died in our place, we need to come to understand that we died with Him. When Christ died, because He foreknew us before the foundation of the world, He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, we became identified with Christ in His death, burial, and resurrection, all three. When Christ died, we died. When He was buried, we were buried. When He was raised from the dead, we were raised with Him to walk in newness of life. Now, it actually goes beyond that. The grand truth is, is that when He ascended, we ascended with Him. We are co-seated, said to be co-seated with Christ in the heavenlies. Now, folks, do you think that God went to all the trouble of, of telling us this for us to just look at that as, well, that's, that's, that's some really nice poetry. Don't know really what it means. Don't know what the, the application of that is in my life. Folks, these truths have meaning, they have purpose, they have application. There was a reason why we were crucified with Christ. So the second pillar of knowledge is our understanding that not only did Christ die for us or in our place, but that we died with Him. We were identified with Him in His death, burial, and resurrection. And therefore, it's no surprise that the first command ever given us, the first command in the New Testament is Romans 6, 11, reckon yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And then this, and then now we have the third pillar. The third pillar is we don't just reckon ourselves dead, to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You'll notice that Romans 6, 11, there's two aspects. Dead to sin, but alive unto God in Christ. If, if all we do is reckon ourselves dead and not alive unto Christ, because the two go together, then we fail to completely reckon. We are to reckon ourselves also to be alive indeed unto Christ. That's the new nature, the sinless new nature. Now we're on our way. Now we're on the right track. Now we can walk uninhibited by our sinful nature. Just as Paul says in Romans 7, we know that the law is spiritual, but I, I myself, am fleshly, sold into the bondage of sin. We can't overcome our sin nature on our own. Most Christians believe that that is pretty much the Christian life, is struggling and trying, you know, through great effort to try to overcome the sin in our life, to try to make ourselves acceptable to God when in fact we began that way. We began on, an, on a basis in which God had accepted us in Christ. 
It is in Christ that we, that's the basis for our acceptance. We don't have to earn that acceptance. And so we reckon ourselves dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And now we're on our way to being conformed to the image of Christ. I wish more Christians would understand all the blessings that they've received in Christ. So abundant, so tremendous, so exhaustive grace. Just inexpressible. I don't even have the words to describe it. There's not one single blessing, not one, that you're lacking in. God has blessed you that much. And it's based on those precious promises, these clear stated, non-confusing, taken at face value, precious promises that we become partakers of the divine nature. That's where the Christian life is, folks. It's in Christ. It has nothing to do with ourselves. It has nothing to do with our trying to attain to, to achieve, to attain to, or maintain some standard of righteousness that we can't possibly, possibly accomplish on our own. To seek out and to pursue and spend our whole lives laboring and striving to attain to blessings that we've already been given in Christ. Already. This is the sad truth of the matter. Most Christians today, because of their failure to understand just all that they have received in Christ, go about it seeking to try to attain those blessings through self-effort. Folks, it is when we are weak that we are strong. Why do Christians not understand that? Why is it so many Christians go to such great effort, put forth such tremendous effort and strength to try to attain that which, and, and which is impossible to attain in the first place, but the, their whole source, which is self, sin and self, the old man, is incapable of doing that. The flesh profits nothing, folks, nothing. If you really want peace, rest, and joy, if that's truly your heart's desire, then put your attention, set your affection on things above, not on things below, because you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to just share my feelings and my thoughts about this. Hope everyone is doing well. Thank you for all of the encouragement, comments, support. I love you all. I truly do. This is Steve. Thanks for watching.